Hello everyone and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Project. Today we're going to be painting Leprechaun Moonlight. It's a very easy, very simple painting that can actually be approached two different ways. I'm going to try to show you both in this one project painting. Let's go over the equipment really fast. We provide you with a spatula to remove your peel. We provide you with two brushes, but of course if you already have your own, please feel free to use them. Our brushes will definitely help you paint any project that we provide for you. We give you a paper towel, a plastic apron, and in this case, we're gonna give you four colors. Blue, white, green, and black. The black is just there as an additional helpful trim for you, but we're primarily gonna be working with just these three, and you could actually paint the painting with just those two. So this is what the painting looks like. It's very nice. Very simple, very easy. You don't have to put this mystic blue in there if you don't want to. I am gonna show you how to do that. But for those of you who wanna bypass that portion, that's fine, your painting will come out just as great. We provide you with an eight by 10 canvas with the peel on it, and we also give you an outline of the clover. So without further ado, let's get started. Now I have my own beat up brushes that I like to use on my projects. So we're just going to use those and get us started. One of the first things you want to do is you want to take some blue, just a small amount, and just kind of go around the outline here a little bit. What this is going to do, for those of you who want to include it, is give you that misty, kind of a mystic shape. Of, of like a sky or, or stars or I'm just going to scrub the blue in of, of from here on. Now you see how I'm going around the outline because if you lose the outline then you're going to have to freehand it which is fine but I provided you with the outline for a reason to help you make your clover a lot easier. So from here I'm just going to scrub some of this blue in and around the area over here like that. You don't need a whole lot. You don't want it to be too thick. I'm going to keep it nice and thin. Kind of keep it close to the edge, but you don't have to go inside. Okay, with that being said, now I'm just going to touch a tiny, 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 tiny bit of white. And I'm just going to kind of, see, start to get that color to kind of go misty for me. This is just helping me with atmospheric. I'm getting close to the edge of that clover, but I'm just doing this for some atmosphere. Take a little bit more of this blue, mix some of that in here. Keep it kind of misty. And just come off over here a little bit. I'm just scrubbing, I'm just scrubbing in that kind of a halo kind of a glowy, kind of an atmosphere. Again, taking the white, going close to the edge. Just gonna scrub this in. Maybe grab a little bit more blue. It's just atmosphere. A little bit of white, scrubbing that in. Maybe a little bit more blue. Scrub that in. Just to give me some atmosphere. Now, like I said, you don't have to do this part. And for those of you who don't want to do it, that's fine. And for those of you that do, good to meet the challenge. So I'm just making it so that it's misty and I'm just going back and forth between the white and the blue. It's like the galaxy in the sky, if you will. There, I'm just provide a little bit more on over here. A touch of white. Just for atmosphere. I know that doesn't make any sense. It never does, but it will later. And again, you don't have to do this part. You can wait to do the very next step, which is fine. This is for those of you who want to be a little bit more challenging. There, that's good enough. That's atmospheric enough. I mean, we're going to clean off this brush. Move it to the side. Now. Let's say for those of you who didn't want to do this part 
and you didn't do it and you're just starting, this would be your first step and for some of you would be your second. Now you could take these, this brush right here, dip it into a little bit of water, tap it into some white, and you just want to flip the paint like that. See? And with that, you make hundreds of thousands of stars. See? And see how it goes over the blue mist that we made, and it gives it kind of a space age look. That's all we were going for was that little atmosphere towards the base. And see, at this point, I don't mind the little white dots getting inside the design because we're going to be painting all of this white momentarily. But what we want to make sure we get is a lot of stars. So again, I take my brush, dip it into a little water, tap into a little bit of white, and just taking my finger and flipping the brush, I can create hundreds if not thousands of stars. And this will all make sense in a little while. I'm making sure I get more around the clover than actually inside. Clean off my brush. Now, I'm gonna take this flat brush because it's got a long stem and I want you to see inside. What I'm going to do now that I have my stars and my little bit of atmosphere is I'm going to take some of this white paint and I'm just going to paint over the peel. Make sure I cover all the little openings between my leprechaun that are inside the clover shape. Now I'm just going to use this brush to kind of redefine my clover shape as I paint. See? Now we want a nice thin layer, so don't make this white paint super thick because we have to let this part dry. And I'm just going to go and follow along the drawing that I was nice enough to provide for you. And by doing this, I'm sure to get the shape of the clover. Now you might... You might have to paint this twice, but we'll see. So again, I'm just going to take the brush, go right around the edge, making sure I catch that white line, covering it with the paint. And anything that's inside of it, decal-wise, I'm just going to paint right over it. See? That's all we need. But I'm going to stay within the contours of the drawing. Make sure I get around the leprechaun that's inside. I don't want to put water and I don't want to put too much paint. And again, I'm just going to go right around the edge. So the important part here is to make the lines that I drew for you work for you. See? Just take your time. You just go around the edges first, so at least you can define where not to go outside of. And try to go right over the lines if you can, so that you're not left with the pencil line afterwards. Stay within the drawing. In other words, don't come from that way. Stay inside. And then once you get that, you just paint over it. You could take a thicker brush, a fatter brush. So again, I'm just using, you can use a pointed brush if you want. The idea is just to paint all inside. So once you get the outline, now you can just block in bigger areas with the fatter brushes. It doesn't matter because we can, again, we could always paint over this a second time. Or we can just let it dry the first time and then... We're going to paint it green, but first, we want to make sure we paint it white. Now, the cool thing about acrylic paint, one, it dries rather quickly. And it dries very hard. So once it dries, you could always go over it and make your paintings even richer, darker, bolder, whichever term you want to use. 
In this case, you see a lot of spaces, but let it dry. So, okay, this is the part about this painting that requires a little patience from you. Right now, I'm just going to continue to outline. And again, you could use a script liner brush for this, a flat brush for this. You could use a big brush for this, depending on your level of control. Now, this is area. This is the area that I now just want to take a lot of paint in, in a mass amount, not a thick amount, because you see it's very thin. So thin you can kind of see through it a little bit, and that's fine. Just trust me when I tell you, you don't want to go too heavy on this. It'll take a long time to dry, and that's not what you want. So don't try to paint it to a total completion. And then what you're going to do now is you see how it's a little spotty? Trust me, leave that for about five minutes and then come back and paint it again. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break. We're going to talk to one another. We're going to look at our paintings, look at our instructions if we want to. I'm cleaning off my brushes. I would suggest you do the same. So while your painting is drying, your brushes aren't going to get ruined. I'm just going to leave those right there. And we're going to come back in five minutes. Be right back. Okay, I know it might not have seemed like it, but I took a five minute break just to let this dry. And I like to touch it with my finger. It doesn't take that long, but I just wanted to make sure we give it enough time to dry. Now, again, I just want to point this out. This is very important. You don't have to do this next part. The patience required in this picture is more time consuming than the actual work itself. But if you want the picture to come out right, you'll allow me to introduce you to the steps that I'm going to use. And if you care to follow me, that's great. If you want to take a shortcut right now, just paint your clover green, peel off your image and call your picture done. Me, I'm going to paint my uh, clover one more time. So what I'm going to do is starting right here in the back, I'm just going to go over what I've already painted. It's going to add one more color of white to it. Just like that. See? And I'm going to show you the difference on this next one. You see over here, I'm just going to take some white, lay in one line of color, and I'm going to show you the difference. Look how much richer this white is to that. And that's all I'm going for. Because when I paint over this, I really want it to be a nice, solid green. So in order to get that, it may take a couple of applications of this white. But you don't need a lot, see? You actually are painting with less paint this time than you did the first time. Because there's a layer already there. And you're just adding to that by just putting a nice coat over this already dry spot. So let's look at this part of the clover to those two. So again, you don't have to do this part. And yes, I'm going to let it dry one more time. But the patience that it takes to make this, it's going to end up pay paying dividends when this painting is completed. So I'm just trying to show you how I would approach this. Did my outline. You see I'm using a much fatter brush this time. And I'm just stroking in and just covering all of those open spaces. Show you half. Look at that. Half and half. See the difference? And once this dries and I add my last color to this. Oh my goodness. This painting is going to look really, really, really delicious. But again, you could have avoided this extra step and this extra drying period. It's still going to be a quick painting. It doesn't matter if you take five minutes here and five minutes there. The painting itself is not going to take you forever to do no matter what you choose to do. I'm just trying to help you get the best possible results. So here's my last clover leaf. Making sure I go over my decal. Get that color in here. Then I'm going to let this dry for a couple of minutes. And I'm going to come back and finish up this painting. Well, here, maybe I'll show you something so we could just 
stay together, show you something in real time. This is regardless of which way you want it to go, whether you peeled or not. Okay. I'm going to take some black and I'm going to paint in the ground. And you see like the, the feet of my leprechaun. I'm going to use that to say that that's ground where he's standing. And just below the clover, that's ground where he's standing. I'm just going to paint that in solid black. This black is going to stand up against that mystic black that you did. Or even if you didn't, it would still stand up. And now I have something for my leprechaun to stand on. Now I'm going to let it dry for two to three minutes. And I'll be right back to show you the final steps to this painting. Okay, that was really quick. That one I took maybe two or three minutes. I went and I got me a little juice. Maybe some coffee is a good thing to have. Because what we're going to do now is the final stages. We're going to take this same brush that we've been painting with that we've cleaned off. And we're just going to paint out clover green. And that's going to be the end of this painting. And in order to do this, you of course may want to consider a couple of options. You may want to go at it twice. You may want to go at it once. Again, this is your painting. You determine how rich, how dark you want things. I'm just here to help guide you and show you how you make the choice of when you're when you're done. Because I can see right now that I'm going to want to do this a couple of times. I told you sometimes the hardest part of a painting is the patience, the steps. But if you really want it to work for you, then this is what you do. You take your time and just follow it along. So I'm going to take this green now, and I'm just going to paint in the clover. And for those of you who say I'm done after you paint it one time, hey, no problem. It really isn't. It's a choice you make in art. You could paint it 40 times, and I'm not going to do that. But I am more than likely going to paint it twice before I peel off my decal. Because I want my picture to look really, 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 really interesting. Here, let's, let's switch to the fatter brush again. I was only using the thinner one to get those edges, but let's just go in. Just add this color in. I tell you, this is a beautiful part about paint. It's so relaxing. It's so therapeutic. And we're not doing anything magical. We're just going into a shape. Adding some color. You know, I like to say we're pushing around a few colors, being creative and having fun. That's all we're really doing. I mean, what else do we have to do today? Might as well have some fun. Push around a few colors and be creative. See? Now, once this dries, and it might even dry by the time I get over here and I just start again without having to delay you. Because even when I say I'll be right back, I do take about three minutes. On the first one, I took five minutes. The second break, I took three minutes. This one, probably take another three minutes. And that's just waiting for the paint to dry so I could go in and add more color. But some paints react differently, like purples and this particular green. Sometimes it takes a couple of Passovers. See, and that's that's streaky, but I think I can make it more solid by letting it dry and then coming back and hitting it one more time. Patience is a is an element, it's a key element. A key element in painting. We always like to give you a lot more color than you need, and I don't squeeze out a lot, but for you to be able to see it in the videos, I actually squeeze out a little bit more. I mean, look how a little bit of blue we use. And we got that nice mystic color when we mixed in some white into that and just scrubbed a little bit. So it's not so much that you have to be an artist or an expert. Sometimes it's just following the steps. 
I'm sure some of you were teaching me how to bake a, a cookie or a cake. As soon as I opened up the batter box and poured it into a bowl and mixed up a few ingredients, the cookies wouldn't be ready yet. So it's just a procedure. It's just a step. Okay, I'm take a touch. It's a little wet. <laughs> so I'm just going to clean off my brush. Clean off both of them. Anytime I use any equipment, especially when I'm waiting in between stages, take an opportunity to make sure my brushes and my equipment is ready. I'm going to let that sit for about two minutes. All right, we're back. And I know it's a lot of stop and go, but let me show you the difference. Now, remember I showed you the white difference, but watch this green difference. I'm going to grab some of this green. I'm going to go right along the side here and show you the difference between one application and being patient, allowing it to dry and adding another application. Watch how much darker and richer this green looks. See that? Maybe maybe not so much there. Okay, well, how about over here? Let me come over here. Grab some green. I'm not putting on thick amounts of paint. I'm just adding another layer right on top of the drying layer. See the difference? That's what it takes sometimes. You know, the one thing I've noticed in my life of painting, and I've painted a lot of really detailed pieces, no one really cares how long it takes to create the painting. They only want the finished product. But you as the artist have to know that sometimes it takes a little bit more than what most people see. Like, who would have known that you had two applications of white on this? Who would have known that you're having two applications of green on this? And it doesn't really matter what people know or don't know. What matters or what I'm trying to teach and show you here is sometimes you just have to be patient. Allow things to dry so that you can add another application so that your work stands out that your work is successful that you feel a sense of accomplishment for what you know you've done and let the viewers think you did it really magically oh she did it so quickly she does it so easy she's so good <laughs> and that's good but you don't have to tell them the secrets of how many applications you applied and how you had to go around this and do that, it's not important. But I'm gonna show you now, look. Look at the difference between these and that. And remember, there's a peel over here, so you're not seeing it as much as over there where there's no peel off. Speaking of which, our next move is to remove the peel off and see where we are. Because this painting is almost done. Leprechaun Moonlight just took a few stop and goes, if you will, a little patience of waiting. But let me tell you, it's going to be so worth it. It's already worth it now, just looking at how green this is. And believe it or not, which I'm not going to do, you could actually let it dry and do it again. And it'll even just get darker and richer and nicer. But because of the video, and I don't want you to have to wait too much more to see the finished product, we're gonna call this one done. We're gonna say that these two applications is enough. Now we're gonna remove the peel. Clean it off my brush. Now, you can remove the peel with this spatula. Just grab it somewhere here in the neck and we're gonna be using these corners and all we want to do is find any little place to kind of dig in. You see how I got a shoe coming up? Now, I've already painted the canvas black for you. We was black from the beginning. So what you're going to get is you're going to get your leprechaun, but he may have some white trim. And I'm going to show you what you do with that. Because voila, there's our leprechaun. Done data. Now you're gonna take your little script liner pointed brush, dip the brush into a little bit of water, 
and just twirl it into some black. And if you very patiently just work right around the white parts like this, you see, there it is. So without taking the shape out, you're just taking a brush and you're just working it right inside. And you just keep working that around. And there you go. Yeah. This is the therapeutic part. This is where you get to just relax and get into the painting. Just kind of come around, take my time. And there you go. You're just going to keep painting that until it's all done. See, the idea is that you just go around very carefully and just take out the little white lines that you don't want to see, that you don't like. That's it. And your painting is done. So, you see... This is another one of those things where you just got to have patience. You just go inside, staying inside the black and just touching a little bit. Let your leprechaun edges and it'll flatten out later. It'll all be the same shade, same black. You can even come down here and just pull up some little lines to act as grass blades on both sides. Even a few inside here. See? Just crisscrossing some lines. Just to give the, the impression that there's some grass blades. And your painting is done. Well, I hope you had fun. I know that I did. This is a very nice painting. It's a very simple painting. It's a very easy painting. It just takes a little stop and go. A little patience. But in the end, you end up with this beautiful what I like to call Leprechaun Moonlight. Well, until next time, have fun. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, J. Robinson Art. Go to peeloff.com to see some of our other really easy and interesting projects. And I hope to be painting with you again. Take care. Bye-bye.